I'm now going to introduce you to our keynote speaker, um, Tony Gunthorpe. Did I pronounce that right? Yes. Yeah. Tony is the Director of Developer Relations for a company called Accelerator. Um, a lot of you picked up the Code Strong t-shirts, uh, courtesy of Accelerator. Accelerator is a mobile technologies company, which I'm going to let Tony explain uh, more about. Just to give you a little bit of background about Tony, he is one of the four people that created SourceForge.net. So that's sort of a fairly big site. <laughs> Tony was telling me uh, this, this, over a coffee before that SourceForge.net was started to satisfy 50 customers. And when they sat down to, well, what's our aim for sort of four, five, six months down the line, they went, well, it'd be good to have 100 projects hosted. They got that in the first week or so. And SourceForge has moved on there. We can never predict how popular things are going to be. We can all hope. You know, we, five years ago, in 2000, you know, 16th of the 9th, 2005, we would never have predicted that we would ever have Joomla being as big as it is, that we would have all these people here today. Um, so we can never pr predict things. Accelerate is something I saw almost two years ago. It was still very new. But it looked like it was going to be something quite exciting. So I'm really pleased to have Tony here to present to you today. And I'm going to hand over to Tony, who can tell you more about the mobile cloud. So is this one working? Is this working? Yeah. OK. <laughs> so I have an iPhone here? Oh, yeah. But it's off. It's not, not a problem. Uh, excellent, guys. Uh, First, I'd like to thank you guys for attending and paying attention during my keynote. I'm not, I know we're a little bit behind schedule, so I'm going to run this at about 30 minutes. Uh, I woke up with a migraine this morning after 33 hours of travel, so that's one, one of the factors in limiting my talk. I'd like to thank uh, Robert, Brian, and Alex for having me here. And I'd also like to thank the rest of the sta staff for their hard work putting on this conference. Great venue. Actually, one of the best venues I've been a participant in, in a very long time. Uh, my background, I'm a software engineering by training, by design. Uh, unfortunately, I'm stuck in a current, my current role is a marketing role. Uh, as Brian mentioned, I'm the developer of, director of developer relations at Accelerator. Uh, prior to that, I spent a number of years doing mobile development, native mobile development on Symbian, Windows Mobile, uh, Blackberry, unfortunately. Uh, and then prior to that, I was the one of the four co-founders of SourceForge.net. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you about the mobile cloud opportunity, what it is, what it means, and how we at Accelerator are trying to uh, make it easier for Joomla guys, Drupal guys, and in general, open source software developers to build mobile applications in the cloud. Okay, so now more and more data is being stored in the cloud than in previous years. You know, the driving force behind this uh, is the accessibility of data and the emergences of low smart, low cost smartphones and tablets. Uh, for example, my iPhone 4, brand new, has more CPU power and more RAM than my laptop had 12 years ago, which is amazing. Uh, on a SourceForge note, uh, the first file server that we ran, Prodigy, went online in 1999, was a one terabyte file server. Nobody at that time was putting one terabyte file servers on the internet, primarily because of cost. It cost us $300,000 to build that, and it consisted of 230 nine gig SCSI drives. Nowadays, you can buy a one gig or a one terabyte drive for your desktop or laptop for about $300 US, uh, and then put that device, whether it's an SSD or what have you, into your laptop or into your desktop. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> so make no mistake that smartphones and tablets are in fact disrupting today's typical PC behavior from what it was even five years ago. 35% uh, of smartphone owners uh, nowadays, nowadays use email less and less on their PC. About 30% of tablet owners uh, say they use email and browse the internet on their tablet instead of their PC, and about 28% uh, are no longer using social networking. They're, they're still using Facebook, they're still using Twitter, but they're no longer using it from their desktop. They're using it from their mobile devices, their smartphones, their tablets. Uh, Absilera is a bridge between 
Traditional mobile development, as we all know it, native development uh, requires uh, a bigger skill set than most of us have. Uh, I'm going to bring that up on another slide, uh, which can be both cost prohibitive and the current system of being uh, current system of using a mobile presentation layer for websites is currently inadequate. Uh, loss of clouds. There are tons of clouds, and these are some numbers from our. IDC uh, survey that we just ran last quarter. 78% uh, of mobile applications have some sort of social component. They're either tying into Foursquare, Twitter, or Facebook, or some other social component. 65% uh, of mobile applications have some sort of media component, whether it's Flickr, YouTube integration, the ability to upload a photo to TwitPic, which I guess kind of falls under both social and media. 70% uh, of mobile applications today or have some sort of commerce package associated with it, whether it's the cost of purchasing that application, uh, using through Google Checkout, Payout, PayPal, or Amazon payment system. 65% uh, of mobile applications have some sort of messaging component, SMS, push notifications, uh, Urban Airship is helping drive some of that with some cross-platform uh, push notifications. You know, 50%, and this is the number that surprised me, only 54% of mobile applications have an analytics component. Uh, if you're not collecting, and this is why it's a surprise to me, because I believe to properly understand your audience, you have to analyze how they're using the application, what they're doing, uh, where they're using your application at based off a of location, how they're using it, how much time are they spending on a particular, a particular feature, on a particular function, on a particular screen, are they using the news aspect more often than not, are they using the social media aspect more often than not, so that way you can drive improvements. And so that was a very shocking number for me that only 54% of mobile applications today are using any type of analytics because I think we're all used to web-based analytics, whether it's Google Analytics or Omniture or Quantcast to see uh, how our users are behaving in our web applications. 42% uh, are using mobile advertising and that's really a, a very, very small number that's a cross between AdMob, which is now Google owned, and iAds, which is still kind of uh, risky. There are a lot of, not a ton of demand for iAds right now. Uh, and once again, the rest of the numbers, you know, 70% are connecting to an enterprise, whether it's an Oracle backend, an SAP backend, or a Microsoft server somewhere in the cloud. Uh, and then you've got your platform, Amazon Web Services. How many of you guys actually host your sites on Amazon, AWS? Anyone? One, two, not very, very few. I'm surprised by that. Uh, are y'all self-hosting mostly, I would imagine? Uh, so the cost of doing ISPs uh, gets very, very expensive. Uh, and 44, uh, I just covered that slide. So where does that leave us? That leaves us lots of clouds, lots of devices, lots of platforms, and multiple SDKs and skill sets. Uh, you've got Android, you've got iOS, You've got RIM, BlackBerry. Uh, you've got the mobile web, whether it's Safari or WebKit. Uh, you've got Mego, which is Linux-based. And then you've got WinMobile. Those are pretty much the dominant platforms out there when, in terms of mobile platforms. Uh, when we start diving into device, you've got you know, several different generations of the iPhone. You've got two generations of the iPad. You've got more, we're seeing more and more Android tablets come online, Samsung Galaxy Tab, the new Motorola Zoom, uh, Dell's got a couple of tablets coming out. Uh, you've got hundreds, if not thousands, of different models coming out in the next year on Android phones as well. And all these require you know, different skill sets. Uh, if you're doing iOS, you need to learn Objective-C. Uh, if you're doing Android or BlackBerry, uh, you're going to have to know native Java software development. And if you're doing, you know, mobile web, what we traditionally think of the mobile web, uh, now that HTML5 is starting to get broader and broader adoption, we're starting to see HTML5 mobile websites coming out. And then you've got the cloud, software as a service, whether it's Salesforce or your enterprise cloud, which could also be Salesforce ba based. And then you've got platform as a cloud like Amazon, AWS. We've also got the Red Hat cloud offering, which was just announced this week at the Red Hat Summit. Uh, so, you know, doing this type of development can be very expensive in terms of real dollars as well as the cost of acquiring the domain-specific knowledge 
uh, to support multiple platforms, multiple devices, multiple skill sets, uh, because you've got, a, like I said, a, a wealth of different languages to learn as well as platforms. Uh, for example, an Objective-C developer skilled in iOS in New York City has an average salary of about 200,000 US dollars. And the guys in New York City, the shops that are hiring iOS developers are finding it very, very difficult to hire good quality people, even at that rate. So where does this fit in? Well, InterAccelerator. We are a free and open source application development platform called Titanium. Uh, you can download all our source code or prepackaged stuff from GitHub or from our website, and we let you create native mobile, tablet, and desktop applications uh, using the existing web skills that most of you guys already know. Uh, primarily JavaScript. Uh, on the mobile side, it's all JavaScript. On the desktop side, it's HTML, CSS, Python, PHP, and Ruby on Rails. As a matter of fact, I believe the Noku guys, are you guys here yet? There's one. I believe you're using Titanium Desktop to somewhat good success. Nice. Thank you. Uh, so some of our product offerings, I've talked about the platform itself being open source and available on GitHub. Uh, we've got Titanium Developer, uh, which is a free open source application. It's in essence a Titanium desktop application uh, that runs on Win32, any Windows platform except for Vista, uh, OS X, and Linux. And it's really a front end for our packaging, building, and deployment system for any Titanium-based application. Uh, we bought Aptana Studio, if any of you guys are familiar with Aptana. We purchased that company earlier this year. Uh, we've just rolled out a preview version of Titanium Studio, uh, which is an Eclipse-based IDE for mobile application development. Uh, and it includes proper debugging, breakpoints, that's not my phone, thank you. Uh, allows for proper debugging, proper breakpoints. Uh, and then we've got our Titanium Plus modules, which actually extend the core platform, and I'll talk about that just in another slide, maybe the next slide. Okay, so what kind of cross-platform development do we support? We support iOS, Android, and BlackBerry. BlackBerry's currently in beta. Uh, we support the mobile web. We support HTML5 soon, like in the next 30 days. Uh, you can do this development on whether it's a Mac, uh, Windows or a Linux-based desktop system, there are some caveats to that. If you're doing iOS development, you have to use a Macintosh. You have to run OS X. Uh, there's no if, ands, and buts about that. That's a limitation of the iOS SDK. But on OS X, you can build iOS applications, you can build Android applications, and or desktop applications. On Windows, you have Android applications that you can build, you can build desktop applications, and you can also build BlackBerry applications. On Linux, if that's your desktop operating system, you can build Android applications and desktop operations. Uh, what we've basically built is we've built uh, a JavaScript API, a layer, if you will, that sits on top of these native APIs. So you don't have to learn how to write an application using Objective-C or native Java to get geo coordinates, to uh, uh, to create a window, to create a sub view, to create a modal dialog window, any of those things that you would have to sometimes struggle in Objective-C and Java, you can write to our JavaScript APIs and we spit out native Objective-C code that can then be recompiled or tested or run through instruments on Xcode or uh, Eclipse and compiled and you get native Java on the Android side of things. Uh, we fully support about 3,600 native APIs, objects, or models currently. Uh, and like I said, we're fully open source. You can extend the platform through our module side of things, uh, build a native module that runs either natively on Android or iOS, and there's a couple different methods to do so. You can do it in, uh, use Objective-C to do that, you can use Java to do that, or you can write a pure module in JavaScript. And two of the modules on our developer blog uh, that allow, it's called TIPHP and TI Python. That one of my guys, who's a Joomla guy, actually a Mambo guy, actually from back in the day, uh, wrote TIPHP and TI Python to allow you to use Python and PHP code in your mobile application. And those are pure JavaScript modules, and they're fully open source as well. Capabilities. What do you get by using Titanium? You get a full-on native user experience, uh, native performance plus native UI. Uh, you've got full table views, animations, gestures. Uh, 
It's not the Wi-Fi modem. Okay? Uh, so you, you get stuff like the accelerometer, you get the gesture movements, uh, full multimedia support, video camera, the regular camera, streaming device, you can stream audio and video to your device, uh, location-based services, we support augmented reality, geolocation, compass if your device has a compass, uh, and native maps through Google Maps, uh, you know, the data that we support, you've got authenticated access to things like Facebook, we have a Facebook module as part of the core platform, uh, Twitter, uh, we've got a couple example apps using XAuth and OAuth for Twitter authentication, Yahoo YQL, uh, native email address book capabilities so you can look up address book information or email uh, from your contacts, uh, social sharing, you know, pretty much the same thing on the data side uh, as we support everything. That's kind of a weird slide. Uh, and then Titanium Plus. Uh, we've got quite a few uh, Titanium Plus modules. Uh, we support the Apple Store Kit, Barcode Reader, we've got the MagTech Credit Card Reader, PayPal in-app purchase, Brightcove, and so on and so forth. So where does that leave us with Joomla? Well, a couple of months ago, I believe it was a couple of months ago, Brian, was it how long ago? I think Brian stepped out. A couple of months ago, Brian contacted us uh, to, help the, to help him build an application with a Joomla backend and a native mobile client front end. Uh, the results of that, as many of you guys know, is the Joomla and Beyond app. Uh, it's a mobile application, native on iOS. Android's coming soon. We were up most of the night last night coding. <laughs> I'm, I'm functioning on about four hours sleep. So we were up most of the night coding. I uh, got a bug report from a couple of our developers just before we started this. It's going to be uh, the rest of the day. If you guys want to see, an, if you've got an Android device and a sync cable uh, and want to see it running on your device, come see me sometime today and I can sync it with my laptop and get you a build so you can bypass the Android store. Uh, but it's in essence the J and Beyond website uh, inside mobile fully native, using stuff like JSON parse uh, and some of our other features to grab data from the website and parse that data out. Uh, for example, the conference news, you know, we've all seen the, the conference news comes off the blog site. Uh, on the mobile app, you can refresh the app. Uh, you can refresh the news. There is a current bug in the 1.0 client of iOS that uh, the refresh is not working. We've submitted a, a bug fix to Apple. We're still waiting on, I haven't heard anything from Apple yet, so hopefully that'll be fixed. It's fixed on the Android side of things. We've also got the, one of the components that, uh, that Brian was really hot to trot about was really critical for him, uh, especially based off the DrupalCon I know Drupal here might be a bad word to use, but the DrupalCon Chicago app for earlier this year was also built uh, on top of Titanium with a Drupal backend. And one of the things that they did not allow was the allow, uh, allow you, the end user, to create your own schedule and store it on the device. We do allow that for both iOS and Android. Uh, so if you've got the app downloaded, you can pick what sessions you want to attend. There's a little button in the top left-hand corner. You click that button and it saves it to your schedule, so you have a personalized schedule for all three days. Uh, the social aspect, a lot of guys here are tweeting with the uh, pound J and B 11 hashtag. There's a social aspect that allows you to post to both Twitter and Facebook uh, through the application itself uh, with that tag pre-filled in. Uh, we didn't, sorry, Brian, we didn't get Flickr integration done in time, uh, so I apologize for that. Uh, and where does that leave us? I mean, everything we're talking about today is open source and available now. Uh, you can get the code. <laughs> if you're interested, you can get the code for the JNB 11 app from GitHub, github.com slash accelerator slash JAB11, fork it, push back, you know, submit put change requests, We'll merge them as quickly as we can. Uh, you can download any of our products at the uh, second URL, accelerator.com slash product slash download. Uh, Titanium Studio, the Eclipse Space IDE, is a very, very early preview. Uh, I wouldn't even consider it, it's a stretch to call it an alpha. Uh, do not build production ready apps using Titanium Studio. Uh, having said that, I've built two apps 
including Jay and Beyond uh, 2011 that is in the App Store today on Titanium Studio, but your mileage may vary. Uh, and you can get that at preview.accelerator.com slash studio. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about tomorrow, we're going to have an unconference session, I believe at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock? Sometime tomorrow. Uh, and if anybody's interested in Titanium, wants to dive deep into the code, see more examples, uh, just feel free to hunt me down. I will have at least one thumb drive with everything they need because some of the downloads can be pretty big and as well as installing everything you need, whether it's iOS, SDK, if you've got access to that, or the Android. Getting Android development environment, the SDKs can be tenuous at best, uh, especially if you're on Windows. Uh, and that's all I have, guys. I appreciate the time that Brian and Robert have given me. What's that? Yeah, I can. Questions are fine. We got the portable mic. Where did we put that? Okay, so if anyone. Is this on? Yeah. So if anybody's got any questions for Tony? My exercise for the year. You're up too late anyway. So my question is, did I understand correctly that I, I'm a PHP developer myself, mm -hmm. so I now develop in Accelerator language and then it runs on iPhone, Android, everything? That, that's correct. I mean, in essence, right now, uh, fully baked JavaScript. So it, let me do this. If I can get my mouse back. There we go. So this is Titanium Studio. And this is the J and Beyond. And we'll switch to App Explorer. So here's all our code. We've got everything structured. We're using a, uh, an MVC framework that we rolled for the conference to use. It's called AIR. Uh, but inside here, we have your typical controllers, models, views, your MVC, well, models, views, controllers framework. We go into app.js. That initializes all our constants. And that is kind of hard to see. Let me see if I can make that larger. Uh, nope, I cannot. Uh, where you define constants, you define all your includes, whether it's an OAuth library or the Facebook modules, uh, you create the initial view. We're creating style sheets, common style sheets. Uh, so we've got style sheets defined for settings, social, speakers, maps, uh, and that's just JSS, JavaScript style sheets. Uh, we've got the OAuth wrapper set up. And then we're initializing here in this next line, line starting at line 57, our controllers, our models, and our views. And all of those files get included in at runtime from def by default. This is all done in JavaScript. With one click of a button, don't fail me now, laptop, we can see it building, and of course it failed me. <laughs> Let's try a clean. And we're going to force a rebuild. And that generally fixes most issues. And that's looking better. And so now we're compiling all of those JavaScript files. So in this example application, the J and B, there's probably at least, uh, I've done a, a line count or a file count, there's probably 60 to 80 JavaScript files that are included. And we're now compiling that into native Objective-C code in this example because I'm compiling for iOS. And it takes a minute or two. Eclipse is dodgy at best. Uh, but it's trying to launch the simulator. And once it launches the simulator, we should be able to see the app and have full all the features that's available in the app on your device on the phone. Or in this case, in the emulator. And we go here to latest news. Hit refresh. Ah, that's the bug. Go to speakers, we can find out, hey, there's Amy. She's doing a class on Malajo. Did I, did I say that right? And we can see Amy's bio if we have a bio. We do not. I can also now email her. Sorry, 
not to pick on you, you were just the first one on the list. <laughs> so now hopefully she has email in regards to that. Uh, I can go back in here, we can go to the program itself and say, hey, I want to see, uh, well, what is Milagio? And I can now add that to my schedule. So now that's added to my schedule, I can go back, look at my schedule, and can see that I've added that class to my schedule, so to speak. And this is all done in JavaScript. TIPHP, what it does, the TIPHP module for the PHP developer, it allows you to include PHP functions uh, like in array into there, so you can read the contents at one pass, unlike JavaScript, which you have to loop through over and over again, which is inefficient at best. Uh, it's just really badly done the way you read contents of an array in, in JavaScript. So, but yes, you can choose 90% of most PHP functions inside, uh, as long as you include that module. Okay, so we've got time for one final question, if anybody has one. One up front. Okay. Whoa, I've got a choice. Doesn't trip over the camera on the way. Yeah, hi. Uh, so on the Joomla backend side, uh, when you're calling the data, uh, I guess the views are, what, is a, is a JSN view, or how, how's that handled? Brian can answer that. He, ah, sorry, who who did the JM Beyond website? So, um, well, Fotis, who's running out of the room, uh, <laughs> built, built the uh, JM Beyond website using K2. Surprise, surprise. And... In order, in order for, to do the connection between the mobile and everything else, the Fotis has done a uh, JSON uh, feed yeah. from, the, from the K2 content items um, right. and stuff like that. So it's, it's all done as a JSON. And on our side, what we do is we grab that JSON feed, we parse through it, and store every, uh, every bit of that into a local database we call TI Storage, TI Storage, which is, in essence, uh, MongoDB on the device. So it allows for fast... Uh, data reads, writes, access of that data. So it's not always making the calls to the Joomla server or the Joomla backend. Sometimes you're going to have limited connectivity. Uh, it took me about 12 hours to get this working here in, in the Netherlands. So, uh, But all that data that I had downloaded before was native to my phone and local to my phone, so I could still access that data. I could still see that the shuttle was going to come yesterday at the uh, Kirkrod Centrum station at 1300. It never showed, by the way. Uh, ended up having to call a taxi, but no big deal. <laughs> it was OK, so on that slight downer, <laughs> thank you very much, Tony. Um,